So next Saturday, April 22nd, we get a big fight, an anticipated fight, and a fight that's had a lot of discussion for many people. Now, this is a fight that a lot of people have gone back and forth on for their predictions, and many people are undecided on who they're picking. And that's between Gervonta Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia. Now, I'm going to give you a quick breakdown on why Ryan Garcia defeats Gervonta Tank Davis. Now, there's a lot of benefits for both fighters in this bout, but one thing I want to straight up state that I believe is a strong advantage for Ryan in this bout is he is a quick starter. Now, when you look at Gervonta's recent outings, he gives up a lot of rounds early. He's arguably down on the cards after the first four or five rounds. And when you look at Ryan Garcia, every fight he's had, aside from the Luke Campbell outing, he's come out swinging. He's come out strong. He's dominated the beginning of the fight. He throws a lot of punches early. Tank fights slow in the beginning of the fight. He doesn't really let his hands go. He looks for counters, but he fights in the defensive, and he analyzes. But Ryan Garcia, while Tank is doing this, will be letting his hands go, outworking Tank, and building up a nice lead early on in the fight. Obviously, Tank can warm up and eventually get Ryan out of there, but this isn't Rolando Romero. I know Roley beat Ryan up in sparring years back, but Ryan Garcia is not going to have a little lead over Tank Davis and give it all away by getting countered in six rounds. He's going to build a lead on Tank, and he's going to follow up on that lead. The second advantage that I believe Ryan Garcia has, obviously this advantage is a fact, but if he utilizes it, is a different story. Length. Ryan Garcia is much taller than Gervonta Davis, and he has a much longer reach than Tank. I believe Ryan's fundamentals are very underrated, and if he can keep Tank on the outside, he can very well win this fight. Now, Gervonta Davis is 5'5 five, five and a half with a 67 and a half inch reach. Tank Davis is 5'10 with a 70 inch reach. So his reach isn't as much longer as I thought it would be. It's two and a half inches, but he's four and a half inches taller. If he can keep this fight on the outside, which obviously in my opinion should be Ryan's game plan. I don't know if that's going to be his game plan, but if I'm training Ryan, if I'm in his corner and I'm telling him what to do, you're not going to fight Tank on the inside. Tank will knock Ryan Garcia out if he engages on the inside with him. If you use your reach, you outbox him on the outside, you rack up points, you will be able to win this fight. Ryan has a lot of length. He has a lot of reach. And if he's able to utilize that, I believe he will comfortably beat Tank Davis. Maybe not comfortably, but he'll beat Davis. He'll convincingly beat him. It won't be a gift. It won't be a split decision. It won't be a majority decision. He won't go to war with Tank. If he can comfortably use his reach, he'll win 8-4, 9-3, maybe 7-5 at closest. Now, the third advantage I feel Ryan has in this fight is discipline. I know this sounds a little surprising because Tank Davis has been a respectable name for a very long time. But Tank Davis has a lot of issues outside of the ring, a lot of issues that we know about, and likely a lot of issues we don't know about. And of course, Ryan Garcia likely has issues outside of the ring as well. All fighters do. But Javonta Davis, not just when it comes to his personal life and when it comes to the hit and run and being in jail and all this other stuff. When it comes to him as a fighter, he's missed weight before. He's had to move up multiple weight classes, and even though him moving up in weight sounds like a good thing on paper, I'm not sure he moved up in weight to be great. I believe he moved up from 120 from 130 because he simply couldn't make that weight. And there was a point in time where I do believe he was struggling to make 135, and because of that, that's why he fought Mario Barrios to relieve himself. Tank Davis has not been the most disciplined. He's gotten in many tr- troubles throughout his career. We've seen him in public and on video not looking amazing, looking somewhat compromised in the past. Now, Ryan Garcia, I don't think his discipline's perfect. We've seen some flaws in his armor as well when it comes to his personal life. However, he's always in the gym. He's always training. He's always in phenomenal shape. We've seen Tank blow up between fights. We've seen Tank look heavy in interviews. I believe Ryan Garcia is the more disciplined fighter of the two. The next advantage for Ryan Garcia is speed. Obviously, Ryan Garcia is the quicker fighter of the two. If he keeps the fight on the outside, he can use that jab hit Tank before he even sees it coming and outwork him. I do believe Ryan Garcia is definitely the quicker of the two. Tank Davis is very quick and is much faster than he gets credit for, but Ryan Garcia is about that the faster fighter, the more agile fighter. Ryan Garcia's speed will be a big advantage for him in this bout. He comes in quick. He throws in combinations. He throws flurries. He has good timing. He's very sharp. He's always on. Anytime he fights, he's warmed up. You can see his accuracy. His punches are flowing so well. Gervonta Davis is going to need time to figure out Ryan Garcia when it comes to his speed because he's going to be getting outworked a lot early on in the fight and Ryan Garcia is going to be teeing off on him in the first three, four rounds. And I do believe Tank's going to eventually adjust to it, but it's going to take a lot of time. The final reason that Ryan Garcia beats Gervonta Tank Davis 
This is going to be an odd one and not one that many people would expect for me to say. Confidence. Yeah, I said it. I believe Ryan Garcia is the first fighter in Gervonta Davis' entire career that has fought him confidently. Aside from maybe Isak Cruz. I'll give Isak Cruz that. I think Isak Cruz fought Tank in stride and did have a lot of self-belief in that fight. But if you look at Tank throughout his career, you look at his first title shot against Jose Pedraza. Jose Pedraza, I know he wasn't confident. He was multiple weight classes below what he should be. He went life and death of Edner Cherry. He knew deep down. And I picked Pedraza back then because I was much younger. Pedraza knew deep down this would be an extremely difficult task for him to achieve. Liam Walsh had very little confidence against Tank. He put up a big front, but in the ring, he showed nothing. Fonseca, we don't even have to go there. Cuellar, we don't even have to go there. Hugo Ruiz, Ricardo Nunez, Yorkis Gamboa. I mean, all these guys. Leo Santa Cruz had some confidence, but he knew that the size, and he was not super confident in that fight. Mario Barrios, I don't think he was super confident against Tank. As I said, Isak Cruz, maybe. Rolly Romero made people think he was confident, but we saw when it came face-to-face, Rolly was nowhere near as confident. Hector Garcia, again, somewhat, but not really. But Ryan Garcia, the other Garcia, the better Garcia, has been calling out Tank Davis for years, has been pushing for this fight for years, has been wanting this fight far more than Tank has wanted to fight him. Now, I'm not saying Tank ever ducked Ryan. I don't think he did. I know he didn't. I mean, the fight's happening, and Ryan Garcia is still in his prime. But Ryan truly wanted Tank. He's wanted Tank since I've known who Ryan was back in 2017 when he was brand new on the scene. This guy has been wanting Tank Davis for a very long time. Ryan Garcia could have called out Devin Haney, could have called out Vasil Lomachenko. There's many other guys could have called out. Now keep in mind, none of these guys are on the same side of the street as Ryan Garcia. Gervonta Davis is not on the same side of the street as Ryan Garcia either. So what made him want the Tank Davis fight so badly? Obviously Tank is a big name. Their styles will clash well. It'll be a huge fight, right? But I think he sees something in Tank that we don't. There's a reason he wants this fight so badly. Ryan Garcia is the most confident guy to ever fight Gervonta Davis. He is coming into this fight with stride, with self-belief. Benefit him in this matchup. That's my final thoughts. That is why Gervonta Davis loses to Ryan Garcia. Now, we'll do a quick little recap. Size for Ryan Garcia. Speed for Ryan Garcia. Confidence for Ryan Garcia. So those are three very noticeable ones that he's proven to have. I feel that these three are probably the most important. These three reasons will will very likely take him over the edge against Gervonta Davis and get him the victory. Outside of the ring issues for Tank, once again, I believe will cause many issues for Davis. They may not be the determining factor, but if this is a 12-round fight and it's six rounds to five, either way heading into round 12, Maybe all that partying and blowing up in between fights won't benefit Tank in round 12. So I believe outside of the ring issues and outside of the ring drama and discipline is a big reason why Ryan Garcia could win this fight. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one. God bless. Tell me your thoughts down below. I'll see you guys later. Peace.